Hello, sixth graders. Uh, here we are today to look at our final uh, packet for school year. Um, I hate we're not able to come back to school this, this year, but uh, we'll do the best we can uh, to cover the remaining uh, topics uh, that I want us to look at. And then we'll work hard next year uh, to get ourselves up to speed. So make sure you have your book and also your instruction sheet. And we'll go through each lesson so that I can help you a little bit, okay? So we're starting out on lesson 147. That's page 265. So if you wanna turn there in your books, and we'll look at the example problems. You just finished up a section on measures and dealing with compound measures. Hope you did well with that. And this one lesson uh, adds on uh, to solving equations, a little bit of algebra. We did this a few lessons back, and today we look at two-step equations. Now, uh, a big reminder here, that uh, a couple of you uh, have graded uh, some of your work and that included equations. And remember, I asked you to show the steps so that you were doing them properly. And a couple of you just wrote down an answer. So I remind us all again, uh, we're not just trying to figure out what X is any way we can. That's not going to help you to learn the process of solving equations. So we need to understand uh, every step and understand the axioms, okay? And that, that's a fancy word. Uh, it just means the steps that we're allowed to do in solving equations. There's one for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. <clears throat> and we use those in solving e each and every equation, okay? So let's look at this today. And I'll, I'll put the first one on the board, remembering that whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other. So our example here is 2x plus 1 equals 5. All right. And again, we're focusing on the fact that there being two steps to solve this equation. Our ultimate goal is to get X on a side by itself, okay? We wanna get X on a side by itself. So obviously, we first look to see if there's anything we can simplify. There's nothing we can do on this side. I cannot add two X and one. They're not like terms, I'm not able to do that. So I first go uh, to uh, the step of just getting this term X. All alone. So to do that, I need to move the one. So I'm going to use the uh, axiom of subtraction here. So I'll look what's going on. Since addition's going on, I'm going to do the opposite. So the first step, okay, now class, you should be showing this step on your paper. That's what I was talking about earlier. Some of you did not show me uh, that you know how to do this. You just uh, figured out the answer, which they're very simple problems. Okay, so plus one minus one, we know that that cancels out. Five minus one is four. So now I'm going to rewrite the equation with what's left. So now I'm down to two x equals four. I'm almost done, but here's where the second step comes in. I need just x by itself. So I'm now going to use the division axiom. How do I know? Well, I look at 2x. Remember that number beside the variable means multiplication. So I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So it's very simple. I need to divide by 2. Dividing 2 into 2 will give me 1. 1x is what I want. And then remember, just like up here, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side, right? So two into two 
gives me 1x. And remember, do we write the 1 in front of it? No. We just write x. That's 1x. 2 into 4 is 2. Our final answer for the example problem is x equals 2. Now, I'm always supposed to solve and check. So what do I do? I take 2. I come back to my original equation up here. And I'm going to insert 2 in for x. So I'm just going to rewrite it over here so you can see it. So if x is 2, I'm going to use parentheses to show multiplication here. And I'm going to solve this side. We want a true equality to make sure that our answer is correct. So 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 equals 5. Therefore, we got it. We got it right. Okay? So um, I'll go ahead and do number 1 for you too. Okay, so look at number one, the very first one in your, in your book. So, uh, give you a little more help here today. 3x plus 2 mm -hmm. equals 11. Now, you still need to work this. You're going to be graded for this, so still work this one on your paper too, okay? But I'm going to do it with you here. All right, so same thing as the example problem. i got to get x on a side by itself, just x. So, there's two steps. Plus 2 is going on. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Look what happens. A positive 2 and negative 2 cancels out. 11 minus 2 is 9. Leaves me 3x equals 9. Multiplication is going on, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to divide 3 into both sides. 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 9 is 3 x equals 3. I come back in quickly and I insert it here. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 equals 11. And we've got it. Now remember, if you need to, pause it. Look at the steps here. If you need to watch it again, just rewind there. Go back to the beginning and look at it all over again. Now, something different with this packet um, being a little, being very nice to you here, make sure you look at the instruction sheet. It'll tell you exactly which problems to do. So, for example, on uh, this lesson, lesson 147, it clearly says only do page 265. So that's on your instruction sheet. So you don't, obviously, then have to do page 266. So uh, skip that page. I'm not making you do it. You're just doing page 265 there. All right. Turn with me then. We, we move to a new topic. Now, I've just chosen the topics that I want to uh, teach for the remainder of this unit. There are some lessons we're not able to do. Don't be concerned. Uh, as I said earlier at the beginning of this video, we'll work hard next year at all of these topics. You're going to have every bit of this again. A lot of it you've already had previously uh, in school as well. So we will make up for it for sure. Now, I I'll throw this out there as well. Any lesson that's not assigned on this paper, uh, you can do on your own. Uh, maybe later in the summer, it would be good. Uh, you know, If you're bored and you want to do some math, you can pull out your book and do these remaining lessons they're not difficult. It would be beneficial to you, but they will not be graded. And again, all you need to turn in is the problems that are on this instruction sheet. All right, but we better move along. So look at the next, very next lesson, lesson 148. That's page uh, 267. 267, 268. And we look at the topic of temperature. So if you see at the top there of that page, we have some definitions. Um, a thermometer, an instrument used to measure temperature. How hot or cold something is. You're familiar with a thermometer as it uh, gauges the body temperature, for example. It gauges the temperature of water. Um, if 
You understand the uh, concept of your refrigerator or your freezer having to be certain temperatures to keep the food either frozen or cool enough to be uh, safe uh, to use. All of that is gauged by some sort of thermometer to tell us what the temperature is. How cold is it? How warm is it? Okay. Uh, number two, there shows us the symbol. And you see that little circle there. Um, you're probably familiar uh, with that. That little tiny circle after a number shows us that we're talking about degrees. And I don't know if you can see it. You can probably see it there in your book. You see it there that I've drawn it on the board. Degrees is the unit of measure. Okay? How many degrees? And uh, we all check the weather. It's going to be 70 degrees today. That is just the unit of measurement for temperature. Now, there are two different scales. Number three tells us there are a Celsius scale and a Fahrenheit scale. Fahrenheit is what we're most familiar with. That is what is used in America uh, more often. Celsius is used more in the scientific field. Um, and again, just like the English measures and the metric measures, it's just a, a choice there. Uh, so we're going to look today, in a moment, of converting from the Celsius scale to the Fahrenheit scale. And then in the very next lesson we're going to look at, in a moment, we're going to learn how to convert from the Fahrenheit to Celsius. And there are two formulas that you'll have to learn to be able to, uh, to do this. Okay, but uh, first I want you to look in the very middle of that brown box. Very important for you to memorize these temperatures, okay? The freezing point of water, you see that there? They give it to you for Fahrenheit and Celsius both. For uh, Fahrenheit, the freezing point is 32 degrees, okay? And the freezing point for Celsius is zero degrees, the boiling point of water is 212 degrees for Fahrenheit, 100 degrees for Celsius. And the normal body temperature, okay, if we took your temperature today, could be, ought to be close to normal, hopefully. It would be 98.6 or, you know, give or take a, a few tenths uh, above that or below that, you'd be perfectly fine. The Celsius body temperature is 37 degrees. Now, just notice real quick, Celsius freezing and boiling point, 0 and 100. So maybe you can kind of see why scientists would like to use Celsius versus Fahrenheit because we're based on that, what, uh, 0 to 100. We're kind of based on that um, scale of 10, kind of like the metric system as well. It's easier for them to do calculations with 0 and 100. But um, you're more familiar with 32 degrees. It's freezing outside. All right. Now look at below. We'll look at the uh, formula. We're going to look at the formula for these two. And um, then we'll practice some together. So the formula to find Fahrenheit. Okay. Change markers here. And you're going to enjoy this because look, you're going to get to use fractions. 9 fifth C plus 32. All right? Now keep in mind order of operation. We are always supposed to do multiplication and division before addition and subtraction. So it is very important in this formula that you multiply 9 fifths times the Celsius temperature first. Then we add 32 and we're done. We have got our degrees converted from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Okay? And we'll look at the other formula in a moment. So first, let's see what they want us to do. They got two examples here. Convert 35 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Does everybody see that? Underneath that nice little picture of the thermometer in the brown box, there are two examples. The first one uh, says convert 35 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So let's use it. All we're going to do is take this very formula 
And in place of C, we're going to insert the 35 degrees. I'm going to use parentheses, just reminding me that that means to multiply these. After I multiply, okay, all I've done is substitute in the amount for Celsius for C into my formula. So now we're going to do a little bit of math. Do not, most of these are going to be simple enough. Do not convert these uh, to decimals. There were some problems um, not, not too long ago in some of the papers that are graded, that uh, problems that you should have left as fractions. Um, I guess some of you were using calculators and uh, you figured the fraction problems by changing everything to decimals. And that is not what you were supposed to do. That was the easy way out, the shortcut way. It will not help you to change nine-fifths to a decimal, even with your calculator. You are missing the point. So, uh, parents, if you're watching too, don't let them use the calculator. Not helping them one bit. This is uh, simple math for them to do. So, here we go. Nine-fifths times 35. We just put it over one. And we got a simple fraction problem. We're going to multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. And then we will get it to its lowest terms. But remember, the best thing to do is to use cancellation first. Can I cancel? Oh, yeah, look how simple. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 35 seven times. 9 <laughs> times 7 equals 63. Now I'm going to add 63 plus 32. 3 and 2 is 5. 6 plus 3 is 9. So 35 degrees Celsius class becomes 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So you see the answer there in your book as well. All right, let's do the other one, all right, using the same formula. So as always, I would recommend write down your formula on your paper where you're working. You got it right there so you can look at it. Use it every time, okay? So this time it says convert 100 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we're going to do the same thing again, guys. Not this times 100 plus 32. So here I go, I set up my fraction multiplication problem, I'm putting 100 over one, can I cancel? Yes, I can. Five goes into five once, five goes into 100. You should be able to do that in your head, okay? But if you can't, set up your division problem and divide five into 100, all right? Uh, but it goes 20 times. Nine times 20. You ought to be able to do that one in your head as well. But just think, 9 times 0, 9 times 2, 180. So now, what's left? 180 plus 32. Don't forget that last step. 8, 3 is 11. Boom. The answer, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? So, uh, in your work today for that lesson, you have some introductory questions that are just from the facts, and then you are to, um, number two says to round these to the nearest whole degree. All you're going to do is look at the tenths and see if it rounds up or not. You're going to have a whole number there. And then three, number three, you're going to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Number four has some practice uh equations for you and then if you'll notice your instruction sheet it says for this lesson do not do the review problems five and six so i'm eliminating those for you okay so turn the page turn over to lesson 149 lesson 149 and we will now convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So I'm going to put it right underneath here so that we see both formulas together. Okay. This time it is five ninths times Fahrenheit. Okay. F minus 32. Okay. There's the formula to learn now. Now, students, as I said, up here, following order of operation, we had to multiply first, 
In this formula, we definitely need to follow the order of operation as well. We must do what's in parentheses first. What's in parentheses, class? Yes, you're right. F minus 32. So whatever our Fahrenheit temperature is, we're going to insert it in our formula. <laughs> we're going to subtract first. Then we're going to multiply times 5 ninths. Using what? Yes, a fraction multiplication problem. So let's see if they've got an example for us. And they do convert 68 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. All right, so I'm going to rewrite my formula. 68 inserted for Fahrenheit. I'm going to subtract here. So if you need to move it so it makes more sense to you, that's fine. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. Now I'm going to set up a fraction problem. 5 ninths times 36 over 1. Now, they may not all cancel, but a lot of these are going to be set up already. They have thought about this. They've made it easy for you. So this example problem is, always look here, can I cancel? Obviously, I can't here, but I can divide 9 into 36. So 9 into 9 is 1. Uh, 9 into 36 goes... Four times. Four times five is 20. And there, this time, that is my final answer because I've already subtracted. Then I multiplied. Answer, 20 degrees Celsius. And you see that's what they got there also in the book for you too, okay? Now, you're going to be doing some practice of this, all right? So on number one on this lesson, you're converting 104 degrees to Celsius. 104 Fahrenheit to Celsius. So plug it in the formula and go for it. On this lesson, again, I have eliminated the review problems. So you, are, you do not have to do, for lesson 149, the whole review page. Review number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, okay? Now, just as I said, you can do any of the extra lessons we don't cover uh, on your own later. If you want to do some of the review problems, guys, go right ahead. Be good practice for you. I won't be grading them. Won't be grading them, but you're welcome to work any of those if you would like to. All right, if you turn the page, I've also assigned for you lesson 150. It is a temperature review lesson. And in the instruction page there, I'm only having you do page 271. Only page 271, so you do not have to do page 272. That includes all those review problems, but we are reviewing the temperature there, okay? Now, guys, turn all the way to lesson 154. <clears throat> turn to lesson 154. We're going to look at time zones, a whole different topic here. Now, for your benefit, you, you don't have to do this, but it might help you uh, understanding some things. Um, I should have put in the instruction page, and I did not. If you want to go back and read page 153, so mark that down. Write that down in your book somewhere. Um, it might be beneficial for you to read page 153, or excuse me, page 275, lesson 153. Read that information about time in relation to our earth, okay? You do not have to work any problems on that lesson. I did not assign it. But we go ahead and look at uh, page 277. If you're familiar with time zones, they show you a map of America, and uh, there are six time zones uh, that you will be uh, presented with here. There are four time zones uh, across the mainland of the United States of America. And they are uh, sectioned off in this map. So you can see them if you start you look down at the book and look all the way to your right. 
you see the eastern time zone. Now, hopefully you know a little bit of geography. Look there, find Tennessee. If you look at this map, you can see Knoxville. Look down there, point to Knoxville with your finger, and you see what time zone are we in. We don't live in Knoxville, but we're close. We're in the Eastern time zone. That's right. Good. Good answer. Okay. The Eastern time zone. Then look as we go to the left. Or if we could say we're traveling out west. As you go west, the time changes. Okay. So as you go, each time zone is one hour different. If we go from east to west, the time becomes an hour earlier every time zone we go to, okay? So it's pretty easy to look at there, and you just need to memorize them in order. Eastern, the next one is called Central. You see the abbreviation CT on the map, and up there, number two, it tells you Central Time Zone. The next one over, and, and I'll, I'll point out in central time zone, maybe you have uh, been to West Tennessee, even Middle Tennessee, Nashville is in the central time zone, but most definitely Memphis is. Maybe you've been to Texas, it's in the central time zone, okay? Uh, then as we keep going West, we next come to what's called mountain time zone, and we see the Dakotas there, we see Colorado, Phoenix, Arizona, all of those are in mountain time zone. And then, I wonder how many of you have been to California? Anybody? Okay, not sure. Uh, maybe not, but California is in the Pacific time zone, okay? So if you start in Eastern, let's say guys, it's nine o'clock in the morning. And it's uh, actually almost 10 here. Uh, so we say it's uh, 9 o'clock in the morning in Eastern time zone. If you travel to the Central time zone, instead of 9 o'clock, it would be 8 o'clock a.m. If you travel on to the Mountain time zone, it would be 7 o'clock a.m. And you travel on to California, it would be 6 a.m. So, real quick, you can see the difference. What is the difference between Eastern and Pacific? Three hours. Three hours earlier. Now, just reverse that. If you're going from West to East, it's an hour later every time zone you go. Okay? So, hopefully that little bit of explanation helps you some. You can, of course, look back at the uh, introductory information. So, on page 277, guys, you are going to fill out a chart. Now, they throw in two more, all right? And it's up there in that um, little map, the grid map at the top right-hand corner. But just throw in, we looked at Eastern, Central, Mountain Pacific. Then we also have Alaska and the Hawaii, Hawaii Aleutian time, okay? And uh, all you do is they go in order. Uh, Alaska would be, if you think about it, would be west of the Pacific, so it's another hour. And then Hawaii would be west of that, which would be another hour. So the difference between Eastern um, all the way to Hawaiian would be five hours. Now, the thing to be careful with is your AM and PM, all right? Be careful with your AM and PM. And I'll help you with 1A. Let's all look at 1A, okay? Notice that they give you a starting point. They chose to give you Pacific. Does everybody see that in your book? In Under Pacific, it's written what? Noon, right? Noon is PM, all right? So if we are going to go in both directions here, so Pacific, let's first think about going back home, going to the east, it's an hour later every time zone. So to go from Pacific to Mountain, an hour later from lunch, from noon, would be 1 p.m. Very important, right? So right in 1 p.m. 
Then going from Mountain to Central would be another hour later. So it goes from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. So you get the idea there. Let's go back to noon. Okay, that leaves you Eastern to fill in on your own. Go back to noon. Pacific is noon. What's an hour earlier of 12 noon? What do you think? 11 o'clock, but is it a.m. or p.m.? Yes, it is a.m. That is right. A.m. So Alaska would be 11 a.m. And then we go to Hawaii, another hour earlier would be 10 a.m. So again, just be careful of your a.m. and your p.m. All right, on this lesson, guys, um, you are asked to do all the problems except for the review problems. So there are uh, some questions on page 278 that you will answer. So you're going to do one, two, three, and four. You do not have to do review five, six, seven, and eight. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right. Another lesson. Let me keep moving along. And remember, I know this is a lot to take in at once. Uh, so stop the video. Do that lesson. Then come back. You know, pause it, come right back when you're ready to do the next lesson, all right? Don't try to, you know, sometimes if you watch every bit of it, I know you're not going to remember it all. So keep that in mind. Keep using the video over and over to help in the explanation of each lesson. All right, in lesson 155, guys, another little topic about our earth we have a couple terms for us to learn. Number one, latitude. So I'm on page 279. Latitude is the distance in degrees north or south of the equator. Now, I'm not going to try to draw a globe uh, on the board, and uh, but we do have one here in the class. All right. So this one is, it is tilted, but if we straightened up this uh globe. Let's take it off. All right. If we think about the world here, the equator is this line that splits our world in half. Okay? We have a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere here. Okay? North above the equator. And if you can kind of see uh, this line, I, I don't know if you can here, uh, this line that goes right around the middle of this world, okay? And that is called the equator, all right? The equator has been designated at zero degrees latitude, all right? And we are able to judge the distance. It's, it's listed as degrees, but you're going to see in this lesson how to take degrees going north and south, distance, measured in degrees, but we're going to see how to change it to miles, okay? And sometimes we do um, kilometers. I don't think they're going to have you guys, I think they're just going to have you guys change to miles. So we're going to learn a conversion factor to change from degrees north or south of the equator to miles, all right? Let me put the world down for a moment. So look at number four. Parallels of latitude run west to east, but measure distances north to south. The length varies, but the distance between each degree is fairly consistent. The distance between each degree is approximately 68.7 miles near the equator, and it's 69.4 miles near the pole. So here's in bold print what you need to remember. So what they've done, guys, is taken those two, and they have rounded it off to keep it a constant. So we're going to use 69 miles in our conversions, right? So for every degree, it's 69 miles. Now, all we're going to do today is use multiplication to figure out 
instead of degrees, how many miles do we have? All right, so look at the example. It says find the miles from the equator to 52 degrees north latitude. All right, so we take the world, we start at the equator, we go north 52 degrees. That makes sense? Remember, the equator is zero, so as we go up, it would be going up 52 degrees. The ones have decided that the measurement is approximately 69 miles. So if we go 52 degrees, and we want to figure miles, we're going to set up a multiplication problem. 69 times 52. 2 times 9, 18. 2 times 6 is 12. 13, 5 times 9, 45, 5 times 6 is 30, plus the 4 is 34. Then we're going to finish out by adding up, and we get 3,588 miles north of the equator. Now, folks, if, it, if you have a problem that says going south of the equator, uh, makes no difference. We still multiply it times 69, okay? Um, sometimes, and I, I don't think they'll give you guys any more difficult than that. That's as simple as it is. It'll either say south or north, and you still are going to do the same thing in these problems. On number two, you're going to multiply each one of those times 69. That's all you have to do. Now, I want you to uh, look at uh, the class practice filling in the information there. This is where you might need to look back to page 275 to get a couple of these answers, all right? So don't look at that and say, hey, wait a minute, you didn't teach that or that's not there. Look at page. That's why I'm saying you need to read page uh, 275, lesson 153, will give you some of these answers that may not appear on the page that you are. So uh, write that down. I, I would suggest you write down, especially beside A, B, and C, that you can find the answers on page 275. All right? And uh, there's others down along through there. Uh, the question about the prime meridian, the question about the international date line, the question about the how many time zones the entire Earth has, you're going to need to look at another lesson to find those answers, okay? So uh, don't stop searching till you find it. It's right there close by. Okay, guys, real quick, one more lesson, and then we're going to have a final review lesson. Hey, we're almost done for the whole school year. So it ought to be exciting to you. So turn to page 281, lesson 156. 281, lesson 156, finding a square root. All right, so very simple. First, think about the idea of a square. We've already squared things. Okay, so remember something as simple as two squared. What does it mean? Two times two equals four. All right, that's squaring a number. Uh, today, we look at the concept of finding the square root of a number. Now, we use something called a radical sign to do that. This is a radical sign that I've just drawn on the board. And there's probably one right there in your uh, book. Yes, number three shows you the radical sign. So that means to take the square root. And finding the square root is the opposite of squaring a number. So I want you to look here at this one. Two squared is four. So the square root of four is two. We're deciding what number times itself would give us the number that we have. So hopefully you understand that. So if you saw something that looked like this, what is the square root of four? And uh, you're gonna be dealing with perfect squares. You're gonna think what number times itself gives me four? Yes, class, good. The answer is two. Now, we could throw in any kind of perfect square in there. Okay, 16. What's the square root of 16? What number times itself gives me 16? Yes, good. The answer is four. 
Okay? Then we can keep going right on up the ladder. What's the square root of 36? What number times itself gives me 36? 6. Good. Perfect squares here that we're dealing with. They come out even. It is a whole number. And uh, if you look at some of the examples that they gave to you, I've done a couple of them, but 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1, so the square root of 1 is 1. That's just something that might be confusing to you, but you just need to remember that. And uh, you look at, they show you the squares and the square roots there. I don't think this will be difficult for you to do at all. Um, but look over these examples, and you're going to answer the, all the questions except for the review. Um, so we're doing, well, actually, I told you to only do problems uh, one and two. Made it real easy for you there. Um, page 281, just do one and two. So we get that thought, that concept. All right. Now, for your last lesson, you're going to skip a few lessons on business. Again, we'll cover this next year. And if you want to do it this summer, go right ahead. What you're going to do, the final lesson for me, is a general review lesson, lesson 168 on page 303. For this one, please notice the instructions, guys. You're going to do the entire lesson. Do the entire lesson, okay? Page 160, or excuse me, page 303 and 304, you're going to answer that entire lesson, okay? Now, remember, watch the video again and again if you're not sure. Maybe ask your parent to help you as well. Um, hopefully, you will gain these concepts. I hate we can't be back together in class, but uh, Lord willing, we will be together again uh, next year and in the fall. And uh, do your best, work hard, and hope you have a great summer break.